This week on Right Now, do you trust what your government and legacy media are telling you? Because they aren't saying much about the farmers' protests in the Netherlands. Why is that? Rebel News journalist Lewis Brackpool, straight off the back of his recent trip to Davos, joins us from the back of a tractor in among the Dutch farmers. To watch the full show, including Dr. Sam Bailey, James Dellingpole, Off Guardian's Kit Knightley and Gulf War veteran Gavin Roberts, click on to iconic.com and start a free seven-day trial. Joined on the line from the Netherlands by Rebel News journalist Lewis Brackpool, straight off the back of his trip to Davos, Lewis has travelled across the English Channel to get in among the Dutch farmers. They're saying enough is enough and they're fighting back. Lewis, welcome onto the show, mate. Um, so, okay, back of a trip to Davos, you're now on the back of a tractor, which is amazing. What's, <laughs> what's the atmosphere like there? And, and specifically, what was it that, that made the farmers say, Do you know what, we're done? Yeah, I just want to say thank you very much for, for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, the atmosphere, I'm currently at a blockade on a highway near a, a, a town called Almelo, and um, farmers uh, are, are not happy because of these radical green policies that not only the Dutch government are pushing through, but the tentacles of the World Economic Forum are really seeping through, where the Dutch Prime Minister is very in bed with the World Economic Forum, and uh, the Dutch farmers are, have woken up completely. I mean, these demonstrations have been going since 2019, believe it or not, but it's really escalated uh, recently with new policies be, uh, coming in where the government want to intervene and take over roughly around 50% in total of uh, farmlands to build on top uh, of these farmlands for whether it be houses or, or various other things and it's under the guise of reducing nitrogen emissions. Uh, so yeah, so the farmers are, are taking it upon themselves to protest. They've been out with their tractors and um, they've got a, a, an extreme amount of support here in the Netherlands and of course internationally, but no mainstream media um, outlet is actually covering this, which is, well, it's classic, isn't it? That was something I was going to ask you actually, Lewis. Was it a case of they just ignore it or, or are they vilifying them? But obviously you've answered that, they've gone for the ignoring it. For me, you, you, okay, so I kind of think that a lot about government policies. Like explain this to me because I'm, I'm a bit confused. It's a green policy, so you want to take green farmland and build houses on it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Sounds mental, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's weird. It's very counterproductive. Um, you've got, they want to reduce nitrogen emissions and the way they want to do it is to is to basically take control of these of these farmlands. Now, obviously, state intervention already is is pretty frowned upon, um, especially in a time of inflation. I mean, you would have th you would have thought that farmers would be the ones to be protected because of supply chains and, of course, Netherlands being a large exporter of food and other um, uh, supplies. But the government are looking to, of course, take back uh, more control. Of, of, of the farmlands uh, where they want particular farms to have uh, caps on nitrogen emissions because they see this as a, as a big problem. So you, you're getting farmlands which they want to cap to around 90, as high as 95%, which is practically impossible. Um, so it's basically decimating the agricultural sector in the Netherlands. And it's just so confusing and, and wrong. But uh, they see it as a way to combat climate change. You know, the politicians in the suits that only see the numbers but don't actually uh, serve the people. It's that classic example. Um, so, yeah, the, the farmers are uh, more than annoyed about it, to put it, uh, to put it politely. It seems to be, you know, a plan that's going on all over because here, even in the UK, we're at a time where they're warning about food shortages. Uh, we're forever hearing about the fact that the shops have, have less stuff on the shelves, yet they're paying farmers here big subsidies to just quit farming. Now, you know, again, explain yeah. this to me. In my mind, if there's food shortages, surely pay me and you a subsidy, mate. We'll go and be a farmer. That would make far more sense to me. Actually, you want more people yeah. farming the land. Give up your lawn, forget playing football, grow some, some food, but you know, obviously not. Um, what, yeah. what's, what's the reaction like of the authorities there? Because as you say, the media are ignoring it. What, what, what are the government doing? Well, it's a good question because we're in a very rural area at the minute in Almelo. And the police have just been going around handing out cookies, which is really <laughs> quite something. But then you see um, in the more of the city areas or, or more inland, 
uh, police getting quite uh, quite violent in some cases. Um, so it depends on where you go, uh, and that's that's the truth of it. And obviously, you get good cops, bad cops. We know we know about all that. But um, yeah, it's it's been a mix. Every, every blockade we have reported on, and every um, convoy we, we have reported on, when the police have turned up, they're very sympathetic, especially in these rural areas, and saying, "Look, like you know." We want you to move on. We understand why X, Y, and Z, but uh, obviously, you know, it's that classic that they're, they're they're under their uniform, so they they can't. They feel like they can't anyway. Um, you know, <laughs> show more sympathy. Of that course, concern. it's interesting you say that about rural areas, though, because for me, like you know, your rural areas generally, they're 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 police officers that maybe grew up there. Whereas when you get your big cities, it's the kind of they tend to be recruited from outside and brought in. They don't have that sense of community with the area. They don't have that empathy with the local people. Yeah. There's obviously a comparison springing to mind straight away with the Canadian truckers um, and what happened yes. there. Do, do you think the farmers can win this though? That's a good question. Uh, of course, after speaking to a lot of farmers and their view, a lot of this, it, they say that it's been inspired by the trucker convoy over in Ottawa, where we saw, of course, Trudeau's insane uh, COVID mandates. Uh, and it's still ongoing, unfortunately, uh, with travel. I think it's starting to ease up a little bit. But anyway, that's it. That's a different subject uh, with Trudeau. But the farmers, I've asked them the same question over and over. I said, if, if the government doesn't meet your demands on what you want, what do you think will happen? And their answer every time is there will be a civil war, and it's uh, it's it's pretty um, pretty intense when you when you hear an answer like that, especially as just a reporter where you're just on the ground just to hear the other side of the story. And when they're all saying the same thing, um, it's pretty scary. So I think we're only seeing a fraction of of what's about to go down in in the coming weeks. I think there's obviously almost like a powder keg situation there. And actually, the more you think about it, you yeah. could probably attribute that to, to a lot of countries at the minute, the United States absolutely yes. being one of them. What's the, what's the public reaction like? I mean, you know, people that are driving past, are they, are they beeping their horns in, in support or have they you know, got the ump because they're trying to get to work? Because cause I, I figure in terms of the farmers winning, if you've got the public on side, you've, you've got half a chance, haven't you? Yes, yeah, so or polls have shown here that uh, and as unreliable as polls are, but uh, polls have shown that over 80% of people support the farmers, which is which is good. Every time, um, every time we've been out reporting and we've followed a convoy in the back of a car and just uh, you know following following them around towns and, and wherever, uh, residents come out with their phones, filming them, and of course clapping, cheering, putting their thumbs up. Uh, we've only had very very few people. Who have actually shown a bit of dis like, you know, shown distastefulness against the, the farmers. Um, but majority, there's been overwhelming support, and um, I think that fills them with a lot of confidence. And they're, they're surprised that uh, an international reporter has come and reported on this because, like, like they keep saying that the the Dutch mainstream media don't want to know. They don't want to, you know, anything they do want to know. They're not. They're not being fair, according to the farmers. So, um, yeah, they do have an overwhelming amount of support, especially from their, their citizens. That's great. It makes total sense as well. It's like, do you support the government that takes money out of your pocket every day, or do you support the people that put food on your plate? It's a no-brainer, really, isn't it? Exactly. So how, how much longer are you exactly. out there for? Are you, gonna, are you there for the duration, or are you back and forth? Well, I, I was supposed to go home tonight, but we've decided to extend our stay. And I'll be honest, I don't know when, I, when I'm coming home. I guess that's the excitement of it, right? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, I don't know when I'm coming home. But uh, we'll be reporting this. We've set up a page called farmerrebellion.com. That's where um, all our reports are going, live updates. And, um, yeah, I guess I, I don't have a date for anyone. So uh, I'll just be continuing to report here until, um, until the bosses over at Rebel say, time to go back to England. We, we appreciate you talking to us, Lewis. We appreciate everything you're doing. And that goes for Rebel News as well. You know, over in Australia, over in Canada, you guys are doing a fantastic job. You're basically doing the job that the Thank media you, should mate. be doing, but you're still doing a great job doing that. So I know a lot of people watching this Thanks, appreciate Gareth. your work, mate. Cheers, mate.
Uh, honestly, really appreciate that. Thank you very much. It's very kind.